All right, welcome everybody. Our speaker today is Abhi Kerani from Université de Lille, and his title is Some Properties for the Duomel Part of the NLS Equations. So thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, <coughs> it's always a pleasure to come here to Tonimo. So my talk is, so I changed a bit the title because I'm going to talk about two properties. Uh, they're related. Okay, so I will consider in general the non initiating equation. This is roughly, so the equation is like that. So this is NLS with some fractional Laplacian. Okay, we're gonna take one and maybe two or some part. Okay. The, uh, and f is nonlinearity. Also, there we will, I will take two nonlinearities. <coughs> so the 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 equivalent, I mean, the, the integral equation. This equation can be put like that. Okay, in this way. So this is the solution is equal to the linear one and plus what I call the dermal part. Okay, the dermal part is defined by this form. Okay. okay. So now if we we, we make a, a, a iteration, the first one is the following because the solution is equal to the linear one plus. The dual part applied to the linear and the plus plus. So I call this the first iteration. It happened that you will see, uh, at least for the first part, that this term has more regularity. So the question <coughs> is if I remove this part, I remember. So, of course, at least in HS. Uh, whatever here, alpha or this one. You no, know, this is a group, so we cannot get any regularity, at least globally, but there is a gain of uh, local regularity. Uh, but in global one, this is a group, there is no gain regularity. But it happens that if I remove the linear part, we can get something more, okay? I'm going to talk about that the first part of the, the talk, okay? So let us now give some precise situation. Okay, the first part, the problem with the remark, so the remark was made by Borgen in this paper, that if we remove the linear part, okay, the diamond part, which is here, is W, Okay, it happens that W is more regular. If we take initial data in HS, of course, uh, U, it's always, I mean, the solution in HS, only HS, we cannot be more uh, regular because you are in, I mean, two sides and we can go come back forward by the time. It's not the heat equation, so there is no, uh, gain of regularity, so we stay always HS. But if you remove this linear part, which is easy one, which is clear, you get something better. So I've, I, I stated before, I've said before, this was remarked by Morgan for this equation. Okay, In, sorry, here it should be two. Okay, if we take the cubic NLS. Okay, in dimension two. Uh, so if the nation data is in HS with S bigger than three or four, so this German part is actually in H1. Okay, so the bad regularity is here. If I remove this part, okay, we get something better. Okay, so uh, in uh, this result uh, was uh, improved, has been improved by Anna uh, and myself in, in 2007. Okay. So, in many dimensions, so in, in the cubic one, yes. 
The dimension is two. Actually, we have that we are in H1, the duamel part in H1 for S bigger than one half. And I think uh, Morgan conjectured that this is, should be um, should be optimal. We cannot do okay lower than one half. Okay. And actually, if we prove that uh, uh, for both cases, the focusing and focusing case, we have proved also if there is finite blow up. So, of course, we are not in H1, but this part only in H1, this one in HS, but does not blow up because we are global. So the blow up happen here and happen in H1 sense. That means that the gradient W has to blow mm -hmm. up at least like that. Okay. So this is uh, and the, the proof use uh, I mean, uh, many arguments and it's based on the use of broken spaces. Uh, and uh, bilinear shikart schemes. So in the extension of this work, I have want to mention. This one. This is here also. I take the dimension four just to simplify what the talk, but we have proved this for many, many dimensions. Okay. So we keep the cubic nonlinearity and we change here in order to stay L2 critical. Okay. So here it will be alpha equal dimension over two if you are in dimension four to simplify, we get the fourth order cubic analysis, okay? <clears throat> so uh, with my PhD student, we have proved that if you start with initiating HS, actually you gain a regularity, but here I have to mention this, this is the difference that uh, So if if you start, uh, so here as essentially we we gain a regularity faster than we have. I mean, uh, we gain two. We multiply essentially the the regularity by three. So here we have s, and we add here minus is minus any epsilon, I mean, essentially, BS is like, like uh, I mean, two minimum of 2S and the three over two. So at least for S smaller than three over four between one half between here, there is one half, this is technical condition. We start with one half, it's just technical. I think we can start from any S positive until three or four, okay? So here we grow like three, I mean, fast and then stabilize, okay? So here is, is the regularity, here is the S second. Extra regularity, here is two and we stabilize. So we gain three times, we start here, for example, is a three times this here, is three times the regularity, okay? The regularity is multiplied by three, okay? And the proof of that, how to get three times the initial regularity, this is, this is due, this is, we have done this thanks to the three, three multilinear estimates, not bilinear, three, uh, three linear, okay? Three linear estimates here, if you take S here is the linear solution, okay? If you multiply three linear solution and we take the, this three cards couple of norm and we take one de alpha derivative, okay? So you can split this derivative on three on the three fraction. So in order to get the regularity alpha, you need only to have alpha over three, okay? So that is three linear. And for that reason, we get something better here. We get three, the regularity is multiplied 
by three, meaning three times the same regularity. Of course, we cannot use, unfortunately, this to improve the result with Anna. For technical reason, we cannot get better than one half. Okay, well, actually, this is the conjecture. Uh, no, even if not, this is the problem. If even, I mean, for S lower, can we get something faster? Okay, no, there is, we start with dimension three, and here we get, I mean, the, the, in this talk, we present dimension four, but the three linear estimates allowed us to get some growth of regularity faster than usual. Okay. So this can, why this is important, I mean, uh, so how to get that, just to explain in general what is the idea, okay, in general, okay. We say it's okay, we define this, okay. Want to divide the difference, here I remove it, the bar so to get something easy. So your W is solution, is W equal the Duhamel, okay, Duhamel, I remember this, is W, okay, minus plus one, step prime, this is what we call F, W, step prime, this one, this is a fixed point, okay, it looks like a fixed point, of this mapping, okay? So, I take arbitrary B, which is smaller strictly than BS. Remember the minus, okay? And they want to make fixed point, but this look like a fixed point, okay? This solution in some, metric space, which is included in, in this one, actually, okay? In this one, okay? Why? Because I, at some time, of course, I need to make a uniqueness um, with the original solution one with you, and so we need some space for them to have uniqueness. Actually, this one is enough helpful. Anyway, so, I want to make resolution to if the equation is unperturbed and they want regularity HS plus B, this is the natural space in this, I mean, for the cubic L4 and dimension four, this is this one, okay? This L, L infinity, H the regularity, L4, this is the couple, uh, Schickard's couple, okay, basic one. Uh, and we take derivative. This is what I call W, uh, capital W. This is the, the, the subordinate space based in L4. Okay. This is the usual one if I have analysis, but this is perturbation of analysis. Okay. This is a half many term, the linear one, uh, quadratic one, cubic one. Okay. So it's a resolution on W. Okay, I can write that. Try this. I, mean, I can try this norm, of course. It's not going to work. The, the first part, okay, which is independent, which is, does not depend on, on W. This is, I mean, the idea comes from this one. We know that the, the linear multiply, I mean, uh, three, linear solution and they have of course the three three linear chicago three linear chicago states okay i just this one okay i know that i can i can control this term okay for the s i given in the theorem thanks to the fact U0 in HS, but I can control this one for S plus B. Why? Because I have three linear solution, one multiplied by the other, so I can use Schickard's system. Okay. This one, the last one, the first one is okay. The last one, there is no problem because this is your unknown. So just 
the third term there is no problem because okay you put it in some space you use like needs and and the chain rule and it's okay okay this one i can control it in every in this space there is no problem okay but all the problem is the interaction term the interaction term. i can use of course all the i mean inequality but if i am left with just two linear solution i don't know how to deal with that because my estimates is good for three this one also is problem okay this is the interaction term even if my w is in h in this space in hs plus b this one the linear one is in hs so this interaction is a problem okay this is the problem okay we so we have to try to work in a smaller space so for example for the the, the previous work with anna like the work by Bergen, we use in a special space called the Bergen spaces so here in this uh, with uh, with Pinsrina, we, we we said okay let us define the space we have taken some kind of optimal space in the sense that this term okay okay this term and this term will be part of the definition of the space itself okay so this one so my spaces will be metric one okay not Banach space or vector space. So there's two parts. This is the usual one. I mean, this is the NLS and perturbed resolution if I have regularity HS plus B. This is the one. Okay. The, the, the second one is defined. Okay. I take the other parameter here, which are left here in consideration. Okay. Just become okay my space why here is the supermom of all i mean for w the supermom of this quantity here the linear solution associated to psi with the psi like u0 in hs controlled by one okay and here so here the square here w linear and here is the other term okay just my definition i put one half here just it's not a norm it's not i mean it's not a vector spaces it's not a norm but i use this just homogeneity at least okay this is my definition of course i can define what i want this problem is how to uh, later all the work is so we take our metric <laughs> space <laughs> This is the W, which are in the ball radius R1 here, and radius R2 here. Okay, this is the two control. And this metric space, we don't put a metric which is difficult, it's easy one. I don't need to use metric with all this quantity, just the L4. Okay, the L4 in time and spaces. Okay, Sometime, sometimes, sometimes, we, we we make things worse or complicated uh, we work two times for the same thing when because here if you prove that you, the mapping you want to prove that there is it's a contraction okay there is two parts prove that you map from this one to itself so for, first of all, this is a complete metric space. It's not difficult to prove. Uh, the second one, the most important, that for T small and R, I mean, R1, R2, that is R1, R2, such that the mapping is a contraction, okay? There is two things. There is the mapping of the space into itself, okay? And the contraction. And for the contraction, 
try to use the most, the easiest, the most simple method, okay? Because if not, you make things twice more difficult, okay? Use this L4 without any derivative. If I prove there is contraction, so there is a fixed point, but the fixed point is in my, my, uh, my space, okay? So uh, this is, uh, so all the difficulty, of course, is here, okay? So how to prove that uh, this metric space, so this operator maps the, this one to it, into itself, okay? And, uh, and so I'm, I'm not uh, gonna to give, uh, but here we met a little bit the analysis, I mean, analysis by Borgen, okay? So we use uh, the localized, I mean, the use of one function in time in order to get function which is globally defined in time. And we use the full transform in time in order to write the duomel part. So this one, what is this one? We write it, okay? <coughs> why? Why? Sorry, this here, something. So in our case, this one, of course. Now this one. Square F W or N okay? F front the front. So it F here. And this I use the So T wave F did it J for example again just to simplify J. Okay. Here the J is the full balance. And so I can put this inside. In some sense, I look to the general part like infinite superposition of linear solution. This is the basic idea. I mean, it starts with this remark, the Burger method, but here we use this only, but we don't use this, this Burger spaces. And in some sense, we get the best, I mean, just we ask the space, the minimum space we get to get all this quantity finite. So we cannot get better space. And our W actually will be in this space. It's not, it's a continue with Y H S plus B and also this part, okay? But I don't know if we can compare to this, to this regularity of Boolean spaces or not, but it seems that it's the best space in which we can put uh, this, um, the duomel uh, part, okay? So this is just, I mean, the, the original um, title I sent does not contain this, this part, but I included it in order to, because the other part also concerned the duomel part of uh, Schrodinger uh, equation, but with another point of view, this is, we will be interested uh, to compactness property, okay? So this is, so, uh, so this is the first part. <coughs> So now this is my second part. So this one is the homogeneous nonlinear shooting equation in any dimension here is in dimension R n. Here is, I mean, here we have the Laplacian, is not I mean, the natural one, the usual one. The initial data is in H1, but the linearity here is multiplied by 
uh, this singular, okay, weight. And uh, this, the scaling of this equation is the following. I mean, if U is solution, U lambda also is solution. So if we look to the uh, homogeneous Sobolev space, which is invariant by this scaling, we find this is H uh, gamma C with this value, okay? <coughs> so here is B and alpha, okay? So it's gamma C critical, okay? Before talking about the local repulsiveness, we are in H1. Our solution, when if it exists, has this or well, there's two conservation laws. Okay. The mass and the inertia. Okay. And like the homogeneous Schrodinger equation, we will have a good sign here. We called we called it. Focus defocusing and we have a new e equal minus to the focusing. Global existence happened for the defocusing case, and the other case we have the case of blow up. Okay, this is a similar situation. The local theory is also uh, there is a similarity. Okay, this is based on fixed point. Using Schrickart estimates. Essentially, we use uh, many couple of uh, Schrickart pair admissible because here we might bump fraction near zero and outside zero, I mean, near the, the origin, outside the origin to take care of this, um, of this thing. Okay, this function is not in LP for any P, but if you make restriction. In the ball, we have some LP outside LQ different. So there is people started, I mean, for many years now, they, they prove a lot of theorem about local existence depend on value of alpha and B. Okay. Okay, now I didn't fix it. The value now, so we're yeah. So in the sequel, I will appear QR is admissible if no, I, we say what is this? Yeah, it's admissible. This is this one, this estimation. Okay. Mm -hmm. the estimation. Uh, Okay, so a space in which people like exactly the usually Schrodinger. Okay, it's an infinity H1 because the initial data is in H1, LP, LQ with one derivative. So here is solar uh, space. Okay. So starting from, from dimension three, for example, this, this result by Guzman. Okay, you prove that with this condition on B and alpha. So here, if you put B equals zero to come to the homogeneous Y, when you see the four of a dimension here, four of dimension minus two, it's L2 supercritical, H1 uh, subcritical, okay? If you take U0 and H1, there is a maximum Okay, uh, solution that is two time, okay, existence, negative and positive one, with solution is in this space. Okay, actually, it's continuous with value in H1, which is LQ W1R for any couple which is admissible, like the Schrodinger one. And because here we are H1 subcritical, okay. The time of existence depend on the H1 norm. Okay, so if it's finite, the H1 norm blow up. But because the L2 norm 
is fixed, is conserved. This is the L2 norm of the gradient, which blows up. This is <clears throat> so now if we take mu equal one, this is the defocusing case. It's easy to get global existence, of course, using the energy because this quantity is positive and this positive, both the sum is conserved, so both they're bounded. Okay. But the scattering is less, of course, the scattering, how to be half the at infinity is more. It's more difficult to obtain, but the result was obtained by my co-author of this part, uh, Van Van Dien, who proved that global existence, I mean, global existence is as well scattering. Okay, means that the solution at plus infinity minus infinity behave like the linear one, a linear one. Oh, no, it was focusing. Normally, it's just easy, but you have scan. There is just U is a global, and there is this two or oh, many more. <laughs> What we call plus minus each one of that. that in H one U T minus H one go to zero when T go to plus minus. Infinity. So there is one for the minus infinity, and there is another one for plus infinity. Okay. And, and how do they relate with U0? Sorry? So you start with this initial data U0, and then you have these other ones U0 minus and U0. Yeah, the, this is, that exist. I mean, this is the the state, the asymptotic states that they exist. This is the, the definition itself of the scattering. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There exists, but this is all the work of the scattering. But I depend on every situation, but I don't know much of how to. But this one, uh, they give some, the prove mm -hmm. the existence of some asymptotic. <clears throat> okay, so that means that your solution. It's nonlinear. This is a solution of nonlinear problem, but at infinity and plus infinity and minus infinity, it's correspond. I mean, it's behavior like a linear one. Okay. So the, the obstacle, the nonlinear is free, become more and more free from the, the obstacle created by the nonlinearity. So it become linear. But what is the relation by u0 and u0 plus one? It's not clear. I mean, this is. This is what we call the scattering operator. Okay. U zero associated U zero plus, for example. Okay. This is uh, in general. There is no. It's not uh, trivial. It's not uh, analytic. Any analytic relation between them. Okay. Now, so with one one <laughs> this year, what we have proved is the following. So uh, before that. To, to say the, this, the invariance so is the scaling. We say that, uh, uh, I mean, for first of all, the condition we this condition make uh, gamma c okay. Actually, this equation is h1 subcritical. For that reason, we have this, okay? For that reason, we have this. This is not H1 critical. If not, the time of existence is more. It depends on the Schrikart's norm and not this one is not enough, okay? And the global existence, even if in the case of the good sign become a harder problem, okay? This is uh, the, my first remark. The second one, the invariance of this solution, I mean, this equation 
this equation is stable by this i mean uh, this uh, scaling also by translation in time but not translation space compared to the homogeneous schrodinger i mean i drop this term this equation because of presence of this x uh, minus b here is not stable by translation okay the group of invariants there is no translation in space okay and this using this based on this remark we prove the following okay here this another here just the, the same definition but uh, we hmm. we maybe later we need what we call the the h gamma admissible this is the same thing but we make minus gamma so if put gamma equals zero is what we call l2 admissible which is the definition the usual definition mm -hmm. of uh, of um, of uh, admissible pair but here she cuts i didn't give the she cuts estimates but for example if for h gamma admissible we get something like that okay psi lq lq controlled by constant uh, psi in h gamma essentially this is come from uh, l2 by sobel embedding so really related to this one to the l2 case here we put zero we have what we call l2 admissible or admissible only shortly and the shikars estimate here if you h gamma admissible okay is dependent q this is the shikars estimate for all the pair which are h gamma admissible but this is how to prove this. This is exactly it's come from the case gamma equals zero. That means the usual one by using the sobel embedding in space here time and here space. Okay. So they are really related. The gamma equals zero and gamma bigger than zero related by sobel embedding in space. Anyway, our theorem. Can state can be stated as follows. Okay, this concern always I'm concerned with the same mapping. That means the nonlinear solution minus the linear one, the Duhamel bar. Okay. Here we prove other property which is different. <coughs> I mean, it's not the extra regularity, but we prove kind some result of compactness okay so here i give the result just for sorry for mu equal one but it's also true for mu minus one but we have to be in the what we call the maximal global existence ball the so minus one is true but we have to be in some maximal void inside which we have global existence let us forget about that we we we, we talk about the global the situation of what we have global solution okay the duhamel part we said analysis in homogeneous analysis okay and now in analysis minus linear one okay initial data okay solution you this is my mapping. Okay. At the first part of the talk, we have proved that this one, okay, this, this the nonlinear goes from H S to H one for S bigger than some 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 S critical or S smaller than one. Now we prove that this mapping actually is compact. Okay. Is compact 
but in this space locally. I will explain why. Okay. In the following sense, if you take a family of initial data here, okay, which bound in H1, which uh, uh, which converts weakly in H1 to U0, okay, and take this operator applied to this initial data or sequence, that means that the UN, the solution associated to this initial data, minus the linear one associated to the same initial data, okay, this is this operator, okay, this converts strongly okay to the same this color it here i don't know a so if u0 and converts weekly to zero h1 a u0 n converts to a u in x lock yeah. so this is the compactness property this is extra compactness if i remove the linear part i get the compactness of of course we are in dimension infinity uh, infinite dimension so the compactness is not easy to prove but okay thanks to we will we will say that this Weight is very important. All things. This result is false, of course, for homogeneous analysis. If you remove this, there is no such result. Okay. Because we have translation in space of section. Okay. But here we have translation in time also. Okay. Have here. For that reason, for that reason. Our result is locally. Mm. I mean, we we solve the problem, and I mean, it's false. If I put here, if remove local lock, it's false. Okay, it's not true. Okay? So if we take the norm here in every compact, every compact, we get this strong convergence. If we take R, we have to take care. Uh, after transaction okay. and this is not in our paper we say we don't know but actually by in preparing this talk i remind you that it's easy to see i mean we didn't think about the extension to r it seems i mean but it's easy to see that it cannot be true because we have scattering we have scattering if you take this and the x you have global solution and with translation or that one okay this is a family okay so here initial data this is my initial data it's like that okay and this one we say that looks like Yes, because there is scattering. There is scattering. So mm -hmm. this might when n goes to infinity, because the time goes to infinity. I know that my solution looks like a scattering. Okay. So in the H1 norm, my initial data of this family of solution is like okay, this sequence of function. But this one, so in h1 okay so i will write this correctly zero minus n delta u plus there exists this is the asymptotic state h1 go to okay. but this one because tn go to infinity oh go to zero okay so this one weekly go to zero okay so u and t 
quickly in H1, go to zero, but U and XR, if we take all the space here, is constant. It's constant. Okay. This goes to zero, but this one cannot does not go to zero. If I put I compact, so it goes to zero because the end goes to infinity, it will go outside. Okay. So so the obstruction actually we can say that the only obstruction to the compactness of this GML operator is the translation in time. So if you hit, and if we take local in time, okay, we have we have no obstruction and we have compactness. Okay. So how to prove that? Actually, everything is based on the profound decomposition. Okay, there is profound decomposition, a technique which has been used for maybe two decades or more, maybe two decades and a half by many, many people to prove some qualitative properties for many PDE. In our situation, okay, what what to say, okay? If you take a family of bounded family of initial data, so we can extract a subsequence which still be denoted that, okay? So such that my family is equal some uh, a sum of what should we call it, profile okay psi g there is some translation here and shift in time here is the sequence if you apply i mean it's maybe better to apply this linear solution what is pi is equal the sum of j minus l j capital g v g t minus t and g x minus x and g plus some remainder which n and g. okay so it says that essentially says that okay and of course we can do it with this remainder is getting smaller and smaller in in these spaces. I'm not okay. Watch this. This is what I give. I mean, this is the, uh, LP LQ for all the pair which are H omega C admissible. Any no problem. It's related to Schrikar systemates up to a small reminder in this norm my any bounded sequence can be the superposition of pairways orthogonal or profile like that so if i put the linear solution i get some that with W and J with this norm, I call it U, okay? Lone soup in N, limit in J or J is zero, okay? And this one, the, the dependence on R, e, N is by translation is space shift in time and space. And of course, the pervasive orthogonality for the people who are used with this is very, that means that you have this. So K, X, N, G, X, N, K, go to infinity when N go to infinity for every K different in J. Okay, so if this thinks, okay, every profile 
go, they move, they, they, they travel, they, 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 get, they separate the air orthogonal, okay? So every sequence of, we can say that every family of bounded linear solution can be written after extraction, possible extraction, to of, of orthogonal sum like that, plus a small remainder in a good space, this one which is related to the Schrickart estimate. That's okay. So this is the linear one, nothing to do with the nonlinearity. This is for the linear Schrodinger equation, okay? And we have asymptotic Pythagorean expansion on all H gamma null from L2 to H1. Oh, okay. This, why? Because, okay, essentially because this term does not interact, okay? At infinity, both they are separated. Okay. Now this is this is classical. I mean, there is a lot of and people in general now in this situation we say, okay, now I'm gonna to define the linear nonlinear solution associated to that. Okay, how to I can write it. Okay, U n is equal in general for the Schrodinger. Uh, the ordinary one, the classical one, which is stable by translation, we have the same form, okay? If I take the nonlinear solution, you said, oh, it's okay, my, my, my linear solution, what you see, okay? Okay, okay. now, in general, the nonlinear, if I define now, the nonlinear solution associated to the, the same initial data in general is he is equal a similar sum for which VG becomes UG, which is which is solution of the nonlinear one associated to VG, taking this shift in time in consideration. Something like that. So for the for the homogeneous NLS. The nonlinear one, it's easy. I mean, what is the profile associated to that? For the Schrodinger, ordinary Schrodinger, it's easy because you have stability by shift time and shift in space. But now, if I consider my equation, what is the relation? I mean, what is uh, the, the nonlinear solution associated to something with shift in space? I'm not stable. I mean, forget everything. Take initial data like that. Okay. And here, u, u0 is u, and un here, un0. What is the solution associated to this one? Okay, which look like. Okay. So this is, I mean, the, the, the core, the heart of our proof is the nonlinear profile of Okay. What is this? It's it's simple. So here maybe I have just come back here. If if you use the pairwise orthogonality of the shift space, shift uh, and time and space, there is only one, at most only one. For which okay, at most on a T N G T N on my T one one bound. We cannot have two bound, impossible. Okay, because the difference goes to infinity. Okay, so one of them is bounded or no one. Okay, so if there is one, we suppose it's the first. Okay, it's the first. Okay, so we write psi one without any translation here because if there is one. Okay, and of course, if it's bounded, we, we don't write. 
if we if this become compact if it's bounded we left i mean if the n here is bounded the first one the first one is this i mean this, this there is no translation if this bounded this compact we, we, we make the profile itself okay so the difference we put it in the reminder so we keep something without translation because it has no sense to translate with something bounded this is compact okay anyway so for us this sum started with c1 maybe plus j equal to capital g the other one for them either t1 t and g j or x and j go to infinity okay not bounded okay the bounded the first one okay so what we have proved is the following actually if we look we take x x I, this is the shrika, this this space of resolution if we take any compact okay and we look not r in time compact okay we look in x i with i compact okay what we see the nonlinear decomposition or the linear profile decomposition is un the nonlinear one associated to phi one the phi one okay is equal to u what is u u is the nonlinear nonlinear solution associated to xi one initial data and the other the other we get the linear profile does not change. Only one is nonlinear. All the other, the linear one is the good one. The profile, all the profile are the linear one. Okay. So here, this is the remainder is small. So if you forget this one, your family of nonlinear solution is equal to the first one okay, and all the other is like the linear part i remember here okay so here i have c1 the nonlinear profile is the nonlinear solution associated to him but the other one is that just the linear one just the linear one is it, is it okay if you have uh, a bounded sequence? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sorry? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's something I didn't understand. Yes. If you have a bounded sequence uh, X and TN from the beginning, yeah. then you get this first uh, term. You yeah, know. it can be zero. If there is ah. no first term, you put zero. Okay. This is because this is the linear here. This is the, the linear, nonlinear solution associated to C1. So if C1 is zero, it does not exist. Ah. Okay, so put here zero. Okay. okay. So now, so what happened now if you have this? What we have? First, here, U in U N in my theorem is equal to N. The weak limit is psi one. Okay. The weak limit here is the first one, which is no translation. It can be zero. Okay. If there is shift in time or in space, which go to infinity, the weak limit disappear. Okay, disappear. So the weak limit is always the first, the first profile without any translation. Okay. So this is one. Now U and minus U one. So this is what I call E NLS minus LS of the C1, CN, this one. Now I use the two, the two, the two, the two decomposition. And this one and the other one is the same. The difference is the first term. And the last one, which is the reminder. Okay, this one shall give you. Sorry. 
Yes. Two more minutes. Okay. Sorry. We need to be to get going. A couple more more minutes and. Yeah, yeah. I, I said, uh, okay. this, uh, uh, so here, the difference, if I make the difference here, is it's equal u t x minus t one. All this term, all this one exists in the linear one. This exists in the linear one. This this say plus r n. This is one. Because all this is in common. If I make the difference, it disappears. The first one only, and the first one here, sorry. The first one here is, if I put the first one here, is this one. And the first one here is this one. All the remainder, all the other are coming, disappear, and I have error. By the way, in the nonlinear prophetic decomposition, always you find, you find this. I mean, here, all the theorem, here, there is some J. All the theorem of fine J. But why we have removed J? Because we have all this in common. If you make this difference, if you put J here, you can put J, of course, but you, you see that there is no J. It's, it's fixed in J, it's <coughs> independent of J. You're a minus, so you okay. So now if I have un which is phi n the, in my notation in this theorem go to psi one the first profile which may be zero again the difference i mean operator applied to phi n here yeah, disappears on this one goes to x i i remember this is compact to i s and then let's minus and let's off. Say what? Strong. This is not here. So I, 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 I finish this dramatic. Why, why we have that? Just, yeah. There is, I mean, to put this correctly or properly, take. Uh, 30 and then more than 20 pages, but the idea is here because your weight okay kill okay all the translation in space which go to infinity okay your weight is like that when you have shift to infinity okay all all things disappear okay and you remain linear Shift in space in time, no. So you have to take in consideration. But the idea, the remark, is the presence of this term, which is 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 is, is not bad. Maybe it looks like bad, but it's very good because it prevent this variation of 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 translation. By the way, it has been used recently to resolve the the negative energy conjecture. You know that if you are in H1 for NLS, the usual one, your energy negative, there is a conjecture that says oh, you must blow up at finite time. And this is open for NLS. It's proven for the radial case when you remove the translation in space. Okay? If you put this, it has been proved recently because there is no translation in space. Okay, so they prove that. For this solution, for this equation, when nu is minus one, the energy is negative. You are in H1, there is a blow up at finite time, and this is open. This is a big problem for the blow up theory for the classical analysis. Okay, sorry, for, I, uh, I, so I, I stop now. Maybe thank you for your attention. Questions? Do we have time? One. Mm -hmm. There are questions. Still from the community.
Sorry, I didn't get in the in the first part in the trilinear estimate. Yes. Is that uh, difficult to prove that trilinear estimate? Uh, not not a lot, but the effect is is, is important. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, in our paper, we used something bilinear one, uh -huh. but uh, here the trilinear. It's not. I mean, in the same spirit, but uh -huh. but. Uh, you see that allows you to divide your regularity by three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's very convenient, but it's not no, it's not hard. Okay, the proof is not uh, it's not it's not hard. This is uh, para differential para differential calculus. Okay. I mean, like the, the the French school will use this para differential calculus. Is not mm -hmm. if not, it's Fourier. I mean, analysis. The proof is is quite. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not difficult, but. Uh, the application is quite good, especially to get something which go fast. So, so here, here for example, okay, uh, uh, to get something which is continuous, <coughs> to get uh, uh, if u zero is h s, where s bigger should be because we have three. It's d over six, so four d over four, four over six. Say, if s is bigger than two over three, your solution is continuous in time and space because you are in h d over two plus. Okay, so e u u u is u t. H two plus. Okay, so you get something which is continuous. So if you start in general, in our case, we have D multiplied by six because you multiply by three. Uh -huh. Okay, so it was six by three D over two. Okay, mm -hmm. so this this acceleration of the gain of regularity. This is quite. This is quite. Uh, uh, but I mean, this is related to, to this fact, the trading area. But we try to do something for our case, I mean, our result, but there is um, no. This is the best one. Uh, I mean, yeah, even if S uh, is smaller, we get something uh, three times the regularity. We haven't been able. And the three, I think, is related. Forget about that and that, but the three, why we gain three times, I think it's related to that. Is this one three here? Is a three here? Mm -hmm. okay. we, we split the regularity over many, many. Okay, we divide this, take half, uh, alpha uh, over three, alpha over three, alpha. If there are four, alpha over four, and you can split more. Okay, this is the idea. It's related three here and three here. Okay. Right, thank you very much again, Charlie, for the talk. Thank you very much.